Marcus Stevenson Jr. here, giving you a personal invitation to join us each and every Sunday morning right here at our beautiful church. We're located at 2659 Pike Avenue in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. We see great prophetic signs, wonders, miracles. Friend, I'm telling you, the gifts of the Spirit are in full operation each and every one of our services. And every Sunday morning, I'm ministering a word from the Lord. Don't miss what God is doing in this season. Join us for more information. You see the number on the screen. Call us for clear directions. Watch verse 1. <laughs> and when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent it forth two of his disciples. So here we see he is representing Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus sent forth two of his disciples and said unto them, Go your way into the village over against you. Now, I was speaking some this morning in our Sunday school class about the most important word sometimes we miss is that word go. Every time we see souls getting ready to come into the kingdom of something being brought before Jesus, somebody had to go out and get it. What I'm trying to tell you, you are those somebodies. God wants to use you to go and bring in others that may not be in the fold right now. And when you came to God and said, God, I give you my life, then you need to be reminded of what you said. You yielded your body as an instrument, as a vessel to be used for the upbuilding of God's kingdom. How can God's kingdom be upbuilt if we're not building the kingdom of God by going when he say go. I mean, if he say go, he mean go. He don't mean stay. And sometimes we praying about something, God said go do it. So he said go your way into the village over against you. Most of the time when you're trying to get somebody into God's perfect will, there's going to be an opposition. It's going to be something that's going to work against you. And here he sends his disciples into a village that seems to be against them. God will sometimes send you places where it seems like the place he sent you seems like that place is against you. Seems like that place is an opposition for you. Just like you want to see people come out, the devil wants them to stay in. And it's going to be an opposition. It's going to be some force there that's going to try to hinder a soul or hinder somebody who's lost from being won by God. But that's where you got to fight the good fight of faith. That's where you got to stand up and have a backbone as a man or as a woman of God or a child of God. And you got to be so determined, just like Isaac was when he did those wells and kept on digging those wells, no matter how many Philistines stopped up those wells, that you're going to outlast the enemy. A lot of times, we don't outlast the enemy because we do something for a little while. Then along the way, we find ourselves getting discouraged. And most times, we discourage because we feel the opposition. But remember, even what the song said, nobody said the road was going to be easy. But you know God didn't bring you this far to leave you. Why would God call you to be a soul winner, and he's not going to enable you to help win souls? Why would God call you to be a soul winner and he's not going to equip you to get the job done that he chose for you to do? So he said, you go into that village. I don't care whether it's against you or not, you still go there. And there's somebody, maybe a preacher, a minister, or maybe a good old saint in here that has set your heart to do something for God. And I want to talk to you very, very quickly. I don't care what the trouble, I don't care what the issue, I don't care what the opposition is. If God say, go, you make up your mind, I'm on my way. I may go do some hell trying to do what God say do. I may deal with some stuff trying to do what God say do. I may be talked about trying to do what God say do. Somebody probably going to look at me crazy when I try to do what God say do. But if God say go, then I'm going. Are you listening to me? So he said, go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as you be entered into it, are you still here? Come on, act like you're here. As soon as you be entered into it, you're going to find a coat that's tied. Notice you ain't going to find it till you get where I told you to get. He said, the moment you enter into it, that's when you're going to find this coat been tied. You're going to find what I want you to look for. 
And this is what we do sometimes. We like to connect with other people that are free because other free people can help encourage you. But I've been saying this for years. Everything ain't about you. Sometimes God will send you to somebody else who ain't like you, somebody who ain't free like you, somebody who's tied down. Why? Because only a free person can free somebody else. We like to connect with people who just like us because it makes us feel good about ourselves. It makes us feel like we got friends, and everybody needs good friends. But sometimes God will send you to a place just like he sent the Apostle Paul to among people who seem like they was barbarians. They never even understood about this God that we serve. They never even heard it like this. And God will send you there so you can be a light in a dark place. But that's why you got to let your light shine. I wish somebody would help me here. That's why you can't afford to let your light go dim. That's why you got to stop waiting on your friends and your, your family folks and other people, even sometime in the church, to agree with you all the time. As long as you do what God say do, you better have that confidence that, God, I'm a light in a dark place. I don't like this darkness. It feels uncomfortable sometimes. Sometimes I wish I had a shoulder to cry on. I wish I had somebody who understood. But one thing I know about it, that if God told me to go, I am responsible to do what God say do and irregardless of who might be tied up when God get finished using me I can have a testimony that I lose somebody that God told me to lose and I preach just a few minutes here oh don't wait too long to get excited because you might miss me here so it said as soon as you're going to find a coat that's tied up where on never man set look what he said he didn't say prophesied only for five days he didn't say write a book and give him 10 steps. He just said, loose him. God, why are you using me? Why did you free me so you can loose somebody else? God didn't free you so we can be like the kindergartners that have show and tell. And you can tell somebody how great you are. Amen. Quiet in the building. Can I preach you? God didn't lose you so we can get title crazy. Bishop so-and-so, apostle so-and-so, first jurisdiction, second. No, he loose you so you can lose somebody else. And we can't preach against titles because God gave us titles. But many people are title hungry. They want to look big in front of everybody else. They want to have the great, what I call, spiritual Olympics so they can seem to be the champion of the church. But you can have your championship in the church. I'm looking to lose somebody who God won't lose. It's a young man. It's a young woman. It's a drug addict. It may be an alcoholic. It may be somebody who's been molested. Maybe somebody who's depressed. And they don't care about your title. Oh, they care about is getting free. There's some of you in here today. God has used some people to loose you. Rather it's me, rather it's another man or woman of God. Thank God, God one thing about it. All I care is that you are free. I can't take the credit because God used us to do it. And just like we can't take the credit for losing you, you can't take the credit for God using you to loose somebody else. Yeah. Hallelujah. You ever been bound before? You ever been stuck on something? No, I just don't feel like I can get past this. Wasn't it joy when you got free? Wasn't it joy when God loosed you? Can't you see how you think differently? How you act differently? Can't you see how your smile lasts now? Can't you tell the difference down in your inner man? You may have had more money then than you got now, but at least you got peace with your little chump change. At least you got joy with your little chump change. At least you can praise God and say, God, one thing there is about it. I once was lost, but now I'm foul. I once was foul, and now I'm free. Yeah. Hey, glory. So he tells them, he said, I want you to go into this village that's over against you. And he said, you're going to find a coat that's tied. They couldn't find the coat unless they went. But he said, I want you to go because you're going to find something. There's people that's looking for you. I'm sorry, there's people that you need to look for who may not even know they're looking for you. There's people that need you that don't know they need you. Are you going to go out there and find them? I'm preaching to the wrong folks. Touch your neighbor and ask them, are you going to go out there and find them? rather than sit in church another week and criticize the preacher, criticize his wife, criticize the praise team, criticize the cameraman, criticize everybody else, when are you going to start criticizing the devil and say, devil, you are not going to keep these coats tied up. I come to lose somebody else. I may not can get everybody free, but God has assigned somebody in my life that I can get loose. Hey, glory. I said, hey, glory. Nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor. 
Tell them, say, I'm looking to free somebody. I'm so glad that God sent somebody in my life. That was a time I thought I had it all together. A time I thought everything in life was going the way it needed to go. But when God sent a disciple in my life, they showed me how I thought I was free. But really I was tied down to drugs. I was tied down to depression. I was tied down to foolishness. And one thing I can say, thanks be to God that they came in my life and now I'm loose. And if God did it for me, you ought to have that type of mind frame. He'll do it for somebody else. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. Can I preach a few more minutes here? Because I want somebody to get motivated, somebody to get inspired. Well, it's not always about you. God, help me so I can help somebody else. I've been molested before, so let me help somebody else who's been molested. I've been raped before, let me help somebody else who's been raped. I've been abused before, let me help somebody else who's been abused. And I'm not talking about giving them help like the world say. I'm talking about leading them to Christ. Because my Bible said that nothing is too hard for God. Sometimes people don't finish the natural program. Sometimes people get kicked out the natural program. But one thing there is about God, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor. And I wish I had some help in here. And I, he said, I'll give you rest. You can take somebody, Jesus, and you can let them know the same God is rich to all that call upon him. I wish somebody would hear me preach this morning. If you believe it, say yes. It's all right, I preached to myself here. Because I feel the Holy Spirit here. God's trying to excite somebody again. Some of you didn't put your ministry up. You think you gotta be a preacher to be a reacher. I told people in Sunday school, you ain't gotta be a preacher to be a reacher. You can reach them just right there where they at. Some of you working beside people every day and you got a word in you that can change their whole life. But if you keep your mouth quiet, if you don't go into the city God told you to go into, see, you're thinking about Memphis and you're thinking about Brinkley and you're thinking about Cersei, but I'm talking, you go to a person because they are the city. They are the place that's filled with things. Some of you got cities all around you need to go to and tell somebody that Jesus is alive and well and that you found the answer and the same God that healed you, it'll heal them. The same God that delivered you, it'll deliver them. Remember the woman at the well? The Bible says she got so excited that she dropped her own water pots and went to the city and said, come and see a man that told me ever that I did. Some of y'all have experienced prophecy. You can go and tell somebody to come and get a word from God. God, if you can get a word, then your life will change. If you believe it, say yes. Do me a favor, just nudge your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, I'm going to preach to somebody this morning. I said, just nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to get up and evangelize. We're talking about how bad the streets is. But when the last time you got on the streets, we're talking about how bad the children is. Oh, y'all ain't gonna like me this morning. But when the last time you talked to the children, we talk about how bad society is. Well, what did you did to change it? God didn't call me to do it. He called us to do it. Stop putting some on me that God put on you. My Bible said that he sent two disciples. He sent two of them. It represents unity. Stop waiting on somebody else to go. And you tell the devil, I'm getting running in my feet. I'm getting my joy back. I'm getting my peace back. I'm getting my zeal back. I'm on my way. And when I come back, I'm bringing a soul with me. Say yes. Woo! Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Can I preach a few more minutes? You're going to find a coat. Look, you're going to find a man that's been divorced. I mean a coat. You're going to find a woman that hates me, and I mean a coat. Oh, where on never man set. 
Wait a minute, watch this, watch this. Loose him. Wait a minute, what's the purpose of loosing him if you're going to leave him where he at? Why would you free him so he can sit there and desire to be bound again? You loose him, then you bring him. Come on, somebody. Sometimes we pray by his prayers. You pray for him, God use you to pray for him, but that's all you do. No, bring him. Okay. Okay, there's some carnality in here. Let me say it like the world said. Give me a fish. I'll eat for a day. Teach me to fish. I'll eat for a lifetime. God said, thank God they loose, but now bring them here. Get them where they can stay free. Brother Stevenson, what do you mean? Don't you sit there and tell that. You know you got loose, but if didn't nobody bring you where you need to be, my God. Because sometimes even where you're supposed to be. I ain't Michael, but I feel like doing the moonwalk. Sometimes even when you, where you're supposed to be, sometimes there's still desires to go back to bondage. But when you where you're supposed to be, you can get what you need to get. And now it's no longer their job, it's your job to stay free. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let me say it like this. Jesus seen a man who had a withered up hand. He took the man, told the man to stretch out. The man's hand got restored, and he took the man by the hand and led him out of that place. Why would he do such a thing? Because he knew if I send you back there, you're going to wither up again. Why would I leave you in a place that already had you withered up? Let me bring you completely out. Watch this, I'm losing my voice. He said, loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, why do you this? How does that sound country? Why do you this? He said, say ye that the Lord ah, got neat. Because sometimes people will get nosy and inquire, who you think you is? Yeah, come on. I'm shaded like you shaded. You ever met them kind of folks? And your wisdom in you, you realize, they salvation. Ain't like your salvation. Well, we just leave that alone today. Amen. If they ask you, why are you doing this? Oh, good God. Because sometimes the devil can even find out mine. Why are you preaching about evangelism? I ain't no evangelist. But we evangelize everything else. Girl, you seen that movie on Netflix? I don't know if I like Tyler's last one. Divorce by black. Mm -mm. The game coming on tonight. I mean, we evangelize everything, but God. It's only when God wants you to run your mouth for Him. I ain't no evangelist. No, 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 no. Your mouth sometimes carries power. It's just a matter of what kind of power is it carrying. I guess what I'm trying to tell you is that life and death is in the power of your tongue. Your tongue can change somebody's life. What you say and being at the right place to say it to the right person can rearrange the whole trajectory of somebody's life. There are souls attached to the evangelism that you do. Jesus said it like this. He said, go in the highways and byways and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Why come the church ain't filled? You need to go out and compel them to come on in. Pastor, when you doing a tent meeting? When you doing a Monday meeting? I better get on back over here. Look at David and say, ouch. If any man asks you or say unto you, why do you this? You tell them the Lord got need of him. So, so, so God holds me responsible to bring people that he needs. He don't just want them. Because that call of mine will fight you. He just wants somebody to fill up his church. First off, with your sanctified self, I ain't got a church. This is God's house. God got need of him. Who knows? God may use you to get somebody saved. It might be the next worldwide preacher. 
might be the next healing preacher, the next anointed prophet, but if you don't go and get him, can you imagine Samuel living in the living in the temple and Eli not even knowing what this Samuel going to do? Didn't even know who was right there before him. Sometimes we take for granted who God had set before us. Sometimes God said, it may not look like much now. They may look like just a child. They may look like there's a nothing and a nobody. But don't you take for granted who's in my house. But one thing is about it, you got to bring them in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Samuel grows up. He's prophesying to everybody. I mean, Samuel was bad, boy. And Samuel was one of the original OGs. He was. Well, Samuel didn't play games. Samuel even told King Saul, you lying. That's how prophetic he was. Samuel said, I ain't got to be there. And I know you lying because I hear the bleeding of sheep in my ears. That's how prophetic Samuel was. Who knows what prophet you may get saved, but you can't get them saved by sitting there talking about everybody in the church. You can't get them saved by not believing in what you got. Sometimes we say we believe, but if you really believe in what you have, then why come you won't use it? Yeah. When we say it, great is he that's in me. If you got the great I am, why come you don't want to get somebody the greatest? You don't want them to have the great I am? I want them to have the best. And can I tell you something? It's in you. God, I said he's in you. In you, he's living right now. But you got to go and give him to somebody else. Glory to God. Mm. So he said, he said, he said, the Lord has need of him. And straightway, they're going to send him hither. What he's saying, the moment you speak it in my name, they're going to let him go. Amen. Don't you give up on nobody because they may look bound. The moment you go in the identity of Christ Jesus, the devil got to let him go. Jesus knew it was going to be an opposition. He knew somebody was going to question, who are you for me to let them go free? Jesus said, don't you worry about that. Here's where I come in at. You tell him I want them. You tell him I said loose them. I guess this is what we do in America. This is the same thing. Tell them in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. It may look impossible for people, but you got to believe. You got to trust that God, if you sent me to them, that you got the power in your name to deliver them. You can free the harlot. You can free the drug addict. You can deliver the unsaved soul. Glory to God. But how can I see that power be exercised through me if I don't put myself in a position to be used by God? Come on, how many times you gonna get prayer? I keep hearing you got healing in your hands. And if you ain't careful holding your hands, touching is the phone and the remote. And the light switch. Come on, somebody. The light switch don't need a healing. The remote don't need a healing. It need batteries. Can I buy you, man? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody's going to get stirred up and start doing something. Somebody say, my God, if the kids can go to the nursing home, why come I can't? Amen. Come on, I ain't going to let the kids have more zeal than me. Amen. Quiet in the building. Amen. Come on, I can go to my local jail place. I can go to YMCA's, the boys' clubs. I can go find somebody at the junior high, at the elementary, at the high school. Say, can I maybe talk to a few of the kids sometime? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Steve's not waiting on my next turn at the church. We'll talk about that later. It's quiet in the building. And they went their way. Wait a minute. Jesus prophesied to them what's going to happen. And even though they know that prophecy told them it's going to be an opposition, they didn't let prophecy scare them out of their position. See, sometimes prophecy can come and we can know it's right. But rather than use that prophecy the right way, we get scared with that prophecy. And it gets us out of position. Hello, Elijah. You heard what Jezebel said. And rather than keep zeal, you hide. Then he lied. Ain't nothing like a lying preacher. Ooh, don't you hate a lying preacher? There's some of people lie to each other, but when you lie to God, that's a new type of lie. 
God said, Elijah, what you doing right here? Here go the lie. I was very zealous. I know people do some bad. Don't y'all hurt me today now. Amen. Come on, I, I come humble today. Amen. Amen. Don't ever get in front of the church. Lord, I'm willing. You say the word. We sing some. Say the word and I'll obey. Get the next one. Blessings to everyone that has connected with our ministry. This is Minister Jay Timms. I'm with Marcus Stevenson Jr. Ministries here at Souls Outreach Ministries. And on behalf of the body of Christ here at Souls Outreach Ministries, we just want to inform you about a very special celebration service for our own man of God, Apostle Marcus Stevenson Jr. This is a birthday celebration service, and we are honoring God for just blessing us with this man of God. God has used the man of God to be a blessing into our lives and into the lives of so many people. If you have connected with our ministry, if you have you know, been blessed by the word of God through the VTN broadcast, maybe you've joined one of our live services and you've experienced for yourself how God moves in the services, how God uses our man of God in the gifts of the spirit. Maybe you have watched even on our church page at Marcus C. Stevenson Jr. on Facebook and have been blessed just by the life-giving Word of God, then we want you to just come and join us in this celebration as we honor and we uplift this great man of God. He has given his life. He has laid down his life for the, the work of God, for the kingdom of God. And we want him to know that it has not been in vain, that everything that he has done for God, for God's people, matters and we are so thankful we are so thankful for every bit of it so come please join us to be a blessing it's going to be held at our church at souls outreach ministries 2659 pike avenue that's in the city of north little rock arkansas that service is going to begin at 11 a.m november 10th so that's november 10th at 11 a.m 2659 Pike Avenue in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. And we know that your presence will be such a blessing. And God also is going to be moving. So also expect a blessing as well. And if you cannot make it, please let us know if you want to be a blessing. There's so many ways that you can be a blessing with maybe a letter of encouragement or even a love donation. You can look on this on this page. You can look on here on the flyer. And you can see where we have our, our P.O. box. And you can also call us to get more information. But we definitely want to get that information to you. And we're just so thankful for what God is going to do on this very special service. Hey, friend, I'm so excited that you have took this time to tune into our broadcast. It's always a great joy and a great privilege to be able to encourage God's people. Brothers, through the Word of God whether it's through a miracle, a healing, or whether it's words of knowledge, words of prophecy that God may give us to be a blessing. We give all the praise to our great and wonderful God. And I'm so thankful that you've took this opportunity to allow us to minister into you.